This video is kind of long. If you feel like being awesome, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up now. I really appreciate it. Sit back and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is What Would Josh Do? And this is my full review of the HTC One. Now I've been using this phone since Monday. Well, I got this black one a couple days ago, but I got my silver one on Monday last week. So I've had a very good amount of time to play with this device. One of the first things that you notice when you put it in your hand is I typically hold my phones like this. I, I've been using a lot of Samsung phones lately, like the Note 2, the S3, and even the Galaxy Nexus. And I'm so used to hitting that power button right here on the side. So while I do wish the HTC had done that, I, it's just something you get used to. On my Evo 3D and on my HTC Evo 4 GLTE, I was so used to hitting the power button right here. And I still occasionally find myself reaching up here to press it, but that's your headphone jack. Power button's over here. Now, I guess it does make sense to use your index finger to turn it on. That's just something I'll have to get used to. I'm not used to it at the moment. So, on the back, you see your noise canceling microphone. So this thing has very, very, very good audio quality. The noise canceling on this thing just works beautifully. And if you've seen any of my front facing and back facing camera tests, the videos that this thing record, they, they just sound awesome and amazing. And I'm definitely using this for all of my videos that I record using my phone. The front has a 2.1 megapixel wide angle 1080p lens. So when you're recording front facing videos, which is very convenient because you can see, you know, what everything that's in the in the shot, I'll show you real quick. I'll switch it to the front facing, which is right here. You just tap that and get me out of the shot. And then there's my, you can't zoom in on the front camera, but you can see my camera and I, you know, you can see everything that's in the shot. I'm trying to get out of the shot myself. So there's my camera and there's the, you know, front facing camera. And then you get it back to the back camera. You just press on that and it takes you to the back camera. And then you've got the Zoe thing. Now, honestly, that would be a completely separate video because I have not even touched that. I accidentally enabled it one time and it took a bunch of pictures and I have no clue. I read about it a little bit, but I haven't really used it too much. You've got HDR, sweet panorama, um, the, for the scene, you can do slow, fast HD. Holy cow. Didn't know that. What? 60 frames per second? I, I just now saw that. I did not know you could record 60 frames per second. Well, I'm going to have to do some test footage. <laughs> I'm going to have to do another video, like recording something that's moving real quick. Because typically phones record at 30 frames per second. My DSLR happens to record at 30 frames per second, unless I switched it to 720p, then it does 60 frames per second. But that's pretty cool. The self timer is pretty neat because you can like press, you can set it to take a picture and then walk like walk away and do the picture. That's pretty cool. For the crop, you can do wide, regular, square. I do wide since everything is widescreen these days. Nothing's normal anymore. Like, everything's widescreen. Monitors, TVs, computers, everything. So, uh, for the video quality, oh, okay. So, yeah, 720p is, is what, 60 frames per second. If you were to change that back to normal, you would be able to record 1920 by 1080. And you can lower that to 720 or MMS. So, that's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to have to check... Nah, I'm definitely going to have to check out that... Um, 60 frames per second and see how that does. Change it back to normal. And then go to, we'll have 1920 by 1080 again. So review duration, yeah, ISO, it'll go all the way to 1600. 100 to 1600. Like for instance, right now, my DSLR is on six, uh, 640 ISO. So for the shutter, you can actually turn the sound off where it takes a picture. So that's very convenient if you want to take a picture without someone knowing you're doing it. For camera options, you can do auto smile capture where the, everybody in the photo has to be smiling in order for it to take a picture. And uh, face detection is pretty cool because when, when it detects your face, it has a little square above it and, it and it sits there and focuses on just your face and not everything else. So that's pretty cool. Lock focus in video. Huh. 
Uh, no. I want that to auto. Maybe that's why some of my videos, like once it gets on focus, it, it doesn't change focus. Kind of like my DSLR. No matter how close I get to it, I've got to refocus in order to get it to lock that focus again. So I'm going to disable that and maybe that'll help that better. Grid's pretty cool because if you're trying to line up a shot and make sure something is perfectly in the middle, it has little overlays and let you know that. Auto upload, you can choose like uh, select a service, Flickr. I do have a Flickr account. I, I have not unlocked this phone yet. I swapped my silver one out for a black one and I haven't unlocked this one yet. So I'm not setting everything up. But I do have a Flickr and I enable that because once you take a picture, it automatically puts that picture or video on your Flickr account. You can choose when to do it on Wi-Fi, daily, etc. So that's a pretty cool feature. I know Dropbox has that as well. But yeah, it's just nice to have more options like Flickr. So what's really, really cool about this is you can be taking a video and then you can take a picture as well while you're doing a video and you'll see the picture right there. And so it's 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 not like you got to switch modes like, oh crap, it's not on video mode, but I want to take a video. So it's pretty freaking sweet. You can take a picture and hold it for burst and it's going to sit there and keep popping them up saving photos and then you can choose best shot so you can actually choose like the best shot one i had i have not played with it too much but again like if you're at a sports event and some something's moving real fast and you know you keep trying to get it at the right moment you can just uh do that so it's pretty cool i'm going to go ahead and select all and then delete and that's that so you've got this right here you can choose your scenes etc all all this is stuff that i don't personally use myself I just uh, I just like recording videos in the highest quality possible and taking pictures in the highest quality possible. So, okay, that's enough with the camera. Again, I, I have not really used this too much as far as like the extra features. Now, this is pretty cool. You just tap this to change it where it's always on the flash. Tap it again and it's the flash will not turn on no matter what. And then it'll turn on based on the environment whether it thinks it should or not. Oh, another thing is... If you want to zoom in on something, like, let's put the Galaxy S3 on the table for a second. You can actually pinch in and zoom. So, that's pretty cool. Sweet. So, now that focus is not actually locking and staying on, like, meaning if I get closer, it's going to actually focus on it. If I get farther away, it's going to focus on it. So... That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm irritated I didn't see that option before. One thing I want to point out real quick is this home screen. Okay, normally when you first turn it on, you get this right here, which is your bling feed. But you can actually pinch out. I did a video on this, so I'm not going to like go through it all over again. But you hold down on the one you want, and then you choose set as home, and it sets that one as home. And if you want to add a panel, like if you want another screen, you just press that, and it makes another panel. You can have up to five total, one, two, three, four, five. But of course, blink feed's gonna be blink feed. So, and I can actually take this one, drag it right here, rearrange. Well, no, I wanna rearrange it. So it doesn't let you rearrange it. So if you tap on it, you can remove that. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this panel as well. Well, no, let me show you. Okay, so you got that blank one now that you can put stuff on. And this is another thing I'm not really feeling about HTC is they make you hold that as a shortcut. And I still have not gotten that right. All right, so Google Talk. Hold down Google Talk. Shortcut. And then you place it somewhere on the screen. Now, this is a little bit annoying too. Watch this. Put that there. Check that out. It's still there at the bottom. Like, that's not supposed to happen, at least for normal Android. So this was getting very irritating. I would go, okay, I want to replace that. You've actually got to go to your app drawer, drag it down there, and then it puts it as two. And you're like, okay, I want to take this one and bring it out. That doesn't work. So what you've got to do is you've actually got to go here, open up your app drawer, press on it, and then take it and throw it in your app drawer. Then it's gone. So like, take this, drag it in there, that's gone. And I can go, I don't want that either. I want Twitter down there. So that's how that works. It's a little different, but it works. Just in case you're like not knowing how to do that because that did it frustrate me a little bit at first. All right. 
And uh, when you turn the volume up and down, you get this little thing and you can turn each one up and down. And I've got to say, listen. I'm using a shotgun mic, so I had to point the, uh, the speaker at the shotgun mic to show you just how loud that was. You do not miss any calls with this phone. The speakers on it are absolutely amazing. If you open up YouTube and you watch a video, like road mics, it's very loud, and if something happens, like, if, if a car's driving past, you'll hear the speaker move from this one to this one, or if it's going from the right to the left, you'll hear the audio because it's stereo, and it's each speaker, like, this one's left and this one's right. So, if you were to do a stereo test, like, we'll use this one, for example, and you'll notice a little Beats icon pops up every time your speaker's in use. Left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, right channel, left channel, left channel, right channel. Now that's actually the first time I've truly tested that out and it, it obviously works. If you were to do that video on your PC, it would play your left speaker and then your right speaker and so yeah, it obviously works left and right, which this is the first phone that I know of that does that, where you, you have true stereo sound, where like on the Evo 4 Jilt E, you had the one speaker in the back, so everything was mono and coming out of one speaker. And that's how it's been with pretty much every phone thus far, until the HTC One. And that's what I'm really enjoying about the HTC One, is this phone it sets itself apart from every other phone out there right now. They didn't take an old device like the Evo 4 Jilt E or the Evo 3D, and just kind of like, hmm, let's make the screen just a tad bit bigger. Let's throw a little bit more powerful processor in there. Let's make the camera a little bit better and let's sell the phone. They actually completely redid the phone, which is a is a bold move anytime. Like if something works, usually you base off of that and you go, okay, people like that. So we'll continue with that, but we'll just make a more powerful phone. It was a bold move and it worked. The phone is absolutely beautiful. For the longest time, I thought the Evo 4 GLTE was their best phone, like as far as build quality. And it is. It is a very solid, sturdy phone because there's no removable back. Now, one thing is, is I do wish they still had that kickstand. That would have just made this phone a wow. Like, I, I mean, I, I kind of get it, but it would have been nice if they included that. But as you can see, HTC is infamous for making very high quality built phones not just cheap you know plastic and something that feels flimsy so i have been enjoying this phone oh and speaking of it if you've seen my first impressions video which i'll link to a playlist below where it has all of my htc one videos in one place so you can you know find a certain video you're looking for but on my first impressions video when i had my silver one my battery life just absolutely sucked i couldn't get more than like 10 hours I'd let it sit overnight and it would almost be dead when I, I would put it on the charger and it like, you know, I'd pull it off about nine, 10 o'clock, go to bed, wake up at six, seven o'clock and it would be almost dead. That is not the case with this phone at all. I will show you right now how long I've had this phone on. Look at that. One day, 13 hours, 10 minutes. I'm at 53%. I made the video a little bit darker so you can see the screen a little better, but one day, 13 hours, 10 minutes, 53%. Now. I want to tell you that I uploaded a video that was almost four minutes long to my second channel, Josh is Nice, links will be in the description. If you wanna see some behind the scenes stuff and if you wanna just you know see more videos, those are videos that I upload from the 1080p front facing camera and I upload almost you know about every day. Sometimes stupid videos, sometimes informational videos. So I use a front facing camera, I uploaded the video, 
and it automatically put it on my Dropbox. And what you do get, a tw if you buy this phone and you activate Dropbox, you do get an additional 25 gigs of free space. I've activated enough Samsung and HTC phones that I actually had to go and I had to sign into an older Dropbox that I have not used in years and I gave that account 25 gigs free that way I could use it for public links <laughs> so you get an additional 25 gigs of space oh that screen just turned off that's that's a pretty cool thing you know Samsung's got their smart stay feature HTC has something almost similar to that we'll go back and then we'll go here to the display gestures and buttons and then for the sleep you know what it says? Auto sleep. It auto sleeps like if you're looking at the screen, the phone will not go into sleep mode. It won't, which is freaking awesome. So you don't have to like worry about how much time you have it set to. As you notice, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm kind of at an angle holding my phone. So that's why it's doing that. But all oh, the double click speed, that's for um, this right here. If you double tap the home button, you've got all your recent apps. Like I want to go ahead and open up Twitter, press home. I'm gonna open up Sprint Zone, press home. I'm gonna open up um, Doodle Jump, press home. I'm gonna open up the Play Store, press home. I'm gonna open up the camera, press home. I'm gonna open up YouTube, press home. <laughs> I'm gonna open up uh, uh, TuneIn Radio. Okay, so there we go. We have all the apps right there, double tap. There's your recent apps. Now, oh, I need to turn that up. What I recommend doing is starting from the top and working your way down. If you need to close a certain app, you just do that. But as you see, they all kind of just stack down and fall down in place. So if you're trying to kill all of them, just go like this. That way you don't have them, the animation play and it slows you down when you try to close out an app. That's just my recommendation, something I've discovered and wanted to share with you guys. So back to this battery. I'm getting off topic here because there's so much to talk about. Back to the battery, we'll go to power. 53% over a day of use. You will get over a day of use. Now, I'll admit that wasn't with heavy usage. That was with medium usage. I did make a couple phone calls. I did post a few tweets with pictures in them. I did upload a, a video with the front-facing camera in 1080p. It uploaded it to YouTube, and it uploaded to Dropbox since it does that by default. I set it to do that, so that way, like, if someone steals your phone, uh, all the pictures will be stored in Dropbox. So if the idiot decides to take a picture, after you stole your phone, it's going to keep putting that in your Dropbox. And I also have mine set to geotag. So that's a pretty neat thing because when the picture opens up in your Dropbox saying a new, a new um, picture was added, then you can actually see the information and find out where that where the GPS tag was from. So it's just a little helpful hint in case you don't have it. Oh, and yes, by default, it does come with Lookout installed, pre-installed, pre which Lookout is a pretty good app. I like it a lot. It helps you find your phone if you lose it this there, there's so much okay so when you first get your phone your grid size is going to be this you're going to have three screens on here it's going to say custom and everything's going to be in folders and it's going to look like this so you're going to go okay where's my twitter where's my dropbox where's this where's that to change that all you got to do is drag it down a little bit press on alphabetical and if you want more apps than just three to show up all you got to do is go to grid size and then you can go to four by five and you, you can even like hide certain apps so they don't show up in there, like HEC Mobile Guide, uh, Kid Mode. Um, what what are we not going to use? Well, Flash Player. We don't. Uh, this does come with Flash Player, which is pretty freaking awesome. So, uh, what else are we not going to use? This Qualcomm thing, which I still don't know what that is. Setup, uh, Parent Dashboard, News and Weather. Not going to use that. Um, Tune in radio. I had the okay. This is a little bit irritating. I have the premium version of SoundHound and the premium version of Tune in radio. If I install those, I have both of those installed, and I can't uninstall SoundHound. All it lets me do is uninstall the updates. Now, yes, once you unlock, once you root, you can uninstall apps that HTC doesn't allow you to uninstall. But it's just a downside. Sprint TV and movies, Sprint Worldwide. Well, let's keep the worldwide in there, but I'm not gonna ever go outside of the United States. But done, and check that out. Now your apps are cleaned up. So if you don't want to stare at an app every time you open your app drawer, you can hide it, which is pretty cool. And like I said, the grid size, you can you can make it more, so there's more things per screen. And it's all alphabetical. And you can also choose most recent, so the apps you launch the most show up. 
So the battery life is absolutely amazing. It's 2300 milliamp hours. So it's bigger than the HTC Evo 4 GLTE. It's bigger than the Galaxy S3. It's bigger than most phones. It is not bigger than the Galaxy S4 and it is not bigger than the Note 2, of course. But I have no complaints at all with this battery. Something I do want to talk about real quick is if you disable, say, Wi-Fi, if you turn off Wi-Fi, I'm, I'm gonna show you something real quick, okay? Um, I do get 4G LTE here in Kansas City, but I had to put my phone in the window to, to use it. So unless I'm tethering, it's kind of pointless. Now, if I go to make a phone call and open up the phone tabs, I can dial 1-800-432-1000. Let me do that real quick. It's Bank of America. I do not have Bank of America. It's just a test number to show you something real quick. So I'll press call. And look, my 3G is gone. It is gone. Now, if you're on 4G LTE, it will still continue the call and you'll still get 4G LTE. But if you're on 3G, you will lose that. So that was something that irritated me about the Note 2 because the Galaxy S3 and the Evo 4 GLTE could both make phone calls and use 3G at the same time. In the call, your 3G pops back up. So, of, of course, with Wi-Fi on, you don't disconnect from Wi-Fi when you're making a phone call. I, that's something I had to point out because I found that was, it was a little irritating. I do wish you could have your 3G still working because if you're on a long phone call, you're not going to get any of your mentions or anything until you end that phone call. So far, this phone is absolutely amazing. I love it. It's got two gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. Now, supposedly the DDR2 RAM helps out with battery life because it's not as fast as DDR3. And the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 or whatever they put in here, it's the same exact processor in the S4, but they have this underclocked to 1.7, which on quadrant scores, you're still gonna get scores higher than 12,000. And I can prove that now. You're still going to get quadrant scores higher than 12, thousand yes my friends that is over nine thousand so very very impressive numbers the four megapixel camera is incredibly incredibly awesome in low light i did a video using the back camera and in low light it focused on everything perfectly like the video wasn't grainy it was dark but that was because there was very little light coming in just from the window that was it Thank you, Avast. So the low light performance in this camera is absolutely amazing. And in my HTC One playlist that I mentioned earlier that I'll link to in the description, uh, you can click on it and you can view the 1080p back facing camera in low light and it looks amazing and it looks even better in the daylight. Now, since that lock focus was on that I just now learned about <laughs> doing this video, it would have focused on stuff better because it would have sat there and continuously focused on stuff that you're recording. The lock focus meant that once you got the object in focus, you could get closer to it and it wouldn't keep refocusing the whole time. So that's something to consider. I would definitely disable that if you're looking for full-time you know, autofocus without having to tap on the screen to focus on something. So the ultra pixel camera, it's a freaking amazing because what they've done is they, instead of making like a 32 megapixel camera inside your phone, which would require like a huge sensor, they put a four megapixel, well actually a four ultra pixel sensor in there. So it lets in a lot more light, which trust me, if you're in a situation where you don't have much light, this is gonna pick up, it's gonna focus on stuff. It's not gonna look grain, it's not gonna look grainy. It could possibly, depending on if there's no light, but it's, it's an amazing camera, and I'm really, really enjoying this phone a lot. And that 1080p front-facing sensor, I've gotten so many comments on my uh, 1080p front-facing video camera test, and on the videos that I post on my Josh's Nice channel, because people are like, wow, did you record this with your phone? That looks amazing. And the sound is honestly better than like the Canon PowerShot 330HS. I honestly am at the point where I'm just like, I don't see a use for that camera anymore. Cause this is a 1080p front sensor and I'm not completely blind. Meaning I see exactly what the person that's watching the video is gonna see instead of just staring at a lens like this, wondering if everything is in the shot and it's 1080p and it looks fabulous. Now I will say the front facing camera in low light is not nearly as good as the back facing camera. So if you're in a low light situation, that back camera is gonna look grainy and kind of bad in low light. But that's when I would recommend using the back camera instead of the front camera. But in daylight, 
or like in a situation that's lit lit up that front camera is freaking amazing now there is a little tiny led oh and you can clearly see it in my htc1 first setup uh video that i again will be in that playlist it has a little green light that flashes when you get a notification when your battery is dying that little light flashes red and when it's charging, it stays red. And when you get a notification, the light does not change. Something I would like to see in the next uh, HTC phone or the next smartphone is dual LEDs. I would absolutely love if the notification light was completely separate from the charging light. I would like a light that flashes red when your battery's dying and stays red when your battery's charging and is green when your battery's fully charged, and I would like a little notification light that's completely separate. So if you have your phone plugged in, that little light's red, and then you also get your a separate notification light. That's something I would really, really like to see in the next uh, HTC phone or smartphone for that matter. With other phones that I've mentioned in this video, it actually is software, so it can stay red while it's charging, but if you get a notification, it'll flash with that notification, and until you clear your notifications, the battery light's not gonna turn red. So, that uh, that's okay and all, but if you get a notification, you don't know if your battery's fully charged or not, you don't know if it's still charging, you have no clue until you turn your phone on and you look, or until you clear your notifications. So, that's just my thoughts of what I'd like to see in the next HTC phone, and I do wanna point this out real quick. This button right here is not a button. It does absolutely nothing. There is a video on YouTube that I can link to if you want me to where they actually, with a custom kernel, because H, uh, you can unlock this phone and root it the day you get it, you can actually make that a button. So like, if you wanna map it to a recent apps button and make this your home button, or some people, the guy that did the custom kernel, he actually mapped it to his menu button. So like, some apps like Speed Test, which I don't have installed. Let me do that real quick. Oh, real quick. I do get a link speed of 433 megabits per second. I posted a screenshot up in my first impressions video. So if you want to check that out, again, that's in the playlist. One thing about that is in my first impressions, I had complaints with this little power save, which you can disable. And I did a video on that. And also how to make the home button take you to home instead of blink feed. And I also complained about the battery life, which all, all that was was simply a bad battery. I replaced my phone, got a different one, and my battery life is just fine. So why would you wanna map that as a menu button once you have your phone rooted and a custom kernel on it? Simple, this little button right here, this app has not been updated in a long time and it is not ICS compliant. What does ICS compliant mean? You open up the Play Store and you got a menu button right there not down here at the bottom. A lot of apps are, you know, adapting that, like Twitter, you go right here, and then you can, you know, go to your settings right there. A lot of apps are adapting that. Google Play Music, same exact thing. You can go up here, press me the menu button for settings. But speed tests and some other apps that have not been updated or are ICS compliant still put a menu bar, a three dot menu thing at the bottom there. And if you had a custom kernel that supported it, you could turn this into a little menu button and that would hide that for apps that refuse to um, comply with the ICS thing where, where the menu button has to be on the actual screen itself. Uh, Quick pick is another example. Look at that right there, bam. So if your app's not ICS compliant, make sure you nag the developer and tell them, hey, look, I want um, Facebook. I don't know, if, oh, even Facebook. Look at that, not ICS compliant. Still has the little button down here at the bottom. So that's all I gotta say. I might, if I find more things down the line, I might make a second part two of this video. Games, I don't have, um, I don't have too many installed because like I said, I just got this phone and I haven't set it up too much because I'm going to be unlocking it uh, like I did my silver one. And once you unlock it, you erase everything. But I've got to say, games look absolutely amazing on this 1920 by 1080 display. Games look absolutely amazing and they run flawlessly. Like I said, I'm almost certain that I'll come back with a part two and I'll cover more things that I didn't cover in this video. 
Now, I should be getting the Galaxy S4 here in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. I'll have a comparison showing my honest thoughts between the S4 and the HTC One. I've got to say that the HTC One is going to be my wife's device. I am going to do a review on it. I'm going to activate it and use it for a week, and I'll even do a comparison between the S4 and HTC One. But I've got to say this. As far as build quality, this phone is absolutely amazing, and I love it so much. As you saw with that left channel, left channel, right channel, right channel, you get stereo sound. Typically, I would lay my smartphone down on the table like this, and so that way the speaker would be facing up, and if I got a call, I would hear it. If you were to lay it down like this, the sound is going to be muffled by the table or whatever it's sitting on. As you, well, my, again, I'm using a shotgun mic, so it's only really getting what I'm talking into it. So, but you might have just heard that. That is absolutely freaking loud. Both of these speakers are amazing. And that's the big, big seller for me. This phone is not a, you know, slight upgrade from a previous phone. This phone, it's not, oh, let's just make it a bigger screen and make it look exactly like our previous model. This is a completely redesigned, super awesome phone. I'm in love with it, and I will be using this thing until the Note 3 comes out. And if, if the Note 3 doesn't wow me like this phone does, then I'll probably stay with this phone. But I've got to hand it to HTC. They went out, did a risky move, completely did a redesign, and they did an amazing job. I am absolutely in love with this phone, and I, I, I just, I, I, <laughs> I get lost for words trying to describe it. This 1080p screen just looks clear. Oh, and I do want to cover this real quick. The little buttons down here, like, as you saw, there's Twitter. And I can take the messaging, throw it up in my app drawer, and, like, replace that with Google Play Music. And then once I lock it, and I unlock it, now Google Play Music's there, and I can drag that up, and it launches Google Play Music, and I can browse through all of my music and uh, listen to it. So that's how you change that. Again, I'll probably come back with a part two once I've, because I've, I've had it for a week, and I was a little bit irritated with my first one because the battery life didn't last very long. But as you see, I'm at 50% with a day and a half of use. Granted, yeah, it did go overnight, but... It does not hardly use any battery when it's not charging and when you have it letting letting it run overnight. It doesn't. It just it sips from your battery. It's freaking amazing and it's awesome and I love it. This week I'll be doing a video on how to flash this thing stock after you've installed a ROM. If you feel like something with your phone is messed up, I can show you how to troubleshoot it, bring it back to 100% stock and relocked. That way you can, you know, see if you saw that problem. And then if you do, you can go to the Sprint store. Once you unlock, you do void your warranty to HTC. HTC will no longer provide support for the device, but your carrier might. So that's just something to keep in mind. Your carrier might still support it. Like I had mine relocked in stock and they had no issue swapping it out with this device. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to be doing some ROMs, installing some ROMs this week. But first I'm going to go stock and show you how to do that on video. And then I'm also gonna install a ROM and then do a review on it and then install another ROM and do a review of that ROM. And yeah, so if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more future videos on the HTC One, please click that like button. It's just a little click, but it lets you know you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more videos like this. And if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there. It'll notify you when I post new videos and I really appreciate it. I've got tons of videos planned. If you don't subscribe, you will seriously miss out on a lot of videos. I've also got some Sadio cases coming for it and I did a video on this case, which I normally keep in my phone because of the fact that when you lay your phone down, you don't want to scratch the screen up or the camera. So I did a video on this case. All of these videos can be found in that playlist that I keep talking about. So future videos are coming very soon on the HTC One, on the Galaxy S4, and all of my other devices that I have. So please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out.